This one, uh, the last two questions, in fact, are about accessibility. And this time, Karen Stintz, you get the first shot at this one. Many people with intellectual disabilities have requested to have information made accessible by the use of plain language. What kind of commitment would be made to ensure that information that is important to people in the disability community be provided in a plain language format? Thank you. Again, that is something that we would, when we think about disability as a lens by which we need to do all of our activities, it becomes evident that as we translate our information and our services into different languages, we need to make sure that it is also made accessible and in plain language. And to do that, we need, you know, again, we need to test against focus groups. We need to make sure that it is actually the message that we're trying to get out is resonating with the population that needs the service. Because we can't be a city that provides services effectively if those that we're providing the service to doesn't understand what the service is or how to access it. So I do make a commitment to making sure that everything we, every service we provide, whether it's the TTC, police, ambulance, the zoo, whatever service it is that we provide, that all of that is done in plain language with the assistance of the Disability Issues Committee so that we know we're getting it right. John Tory. Well, I think there's, there's uh, three reasons you do this. I mean, one is it's just considering. I think there are an awful lot of citizens who would welcome the use of plain language who have no disability whatsoever. So <laughs> uh, secondly, I think it's, it's actually you know, less expensive because I think it makes the system just easier to use for uh, everybody. And finally, it's much more transparent. I mean, when it's plain language as opposed to a lot of the mice types we see oftentimes in government documents and, and company documents sometimes, uh, it, it, it's, not, it's not good in terms of us all understanding what's really going on. And we have examples, one close to home, the South Riverdale Community Center, they actually prepare a plain language uh, group, they have a group that prepare uh, materials for the citizens in that area to help them understand what's going on with government. Seattle and San Francisco, they both made big commitments uh, to this and have active programs in place to make sure as much as possible the government runs on plain language. And I think plain language will be plainly understood by average citizens of all kinds, including people who are disabled and sometimes need a bit of help in one way or another with that. Olivia Chow. Well, I'm totally committed to it because I don't think it's just a disability issue. We are one of the world's most diverse city. Uh, many of our citizens, including me, uh, don't have English as first language. So literacy is an ongoing issue. Putting things in lay language, easy to understand, uh, helps everyone. Calgary recently committed to using plain language, and we should too. It's a no-brainer. David Sopnack. I think the only thing I can add to what, to, to what my, uh, my, my colleagues are saying here is not only plain language, but also uh, plain design. Uh, there's a lot to be said in, in, um, in pictures and graphs and making things easier to visualize. And so not only plain language is, is important, but also plain design. So it's easily understandable, not only for those with handicap, but those who just plain old wanted to understand what's going on at City Hall.